A few years ago, I was at a social gathering, and a woman came up to me, and she said, aren't you a dietitian? And I said, yes. And she said, you're drinking a Diet Coke. Aren't they bad for you? No. There is so much conflicting information about artificial sweeteners, diet soda, non-nutritive sweeteners. My name is Neely with Neely on Nutrition, and I want to take the fear out of food. I've hesitated making this video. I have a fear that you're gonna judge me. Oh my gosh, a di dietitian drinking Diet Coke. Yes, I drink Diet Coke, but I wouldn't be drinking it if I feared it. We're all defined by our experiences. I was a kid in the 70s and starting my dieting journey. And I remember being introduced to diet soda by way of a pink can called Tab. When Diet Coke was introduced in the early 1980s, I ditched the tab because I don't like it anyway. I didn't like the saccharine taste and switched to Diet Coke and I've been drinking it ever since. I like Diet Coke. It makes me happy. And I'm not saying that diet sodas, artificial sweeteners are right for everybody because they're not. But I want to take the fear away. I understand that it's a very polarizing topic. And I, um, as a nutrition nerd, I'm going to show you. This is my binder artificial sweetener binder and um, this is only some of what I have. I have a Google spreadsheet that has over a thousand studies in it um, on a whole lot of nutrition topics and I've got over 50 on artificial sweeteners alone. So I want to be around a long time so you better believe I'm going to be looking at the research. And just so you know that sweeteners are more highly regulated than the dietary supplement that you might be taking. Let that sink in for a moment. What the internet and social media say, artificial sweeteners can cause several symptoms, including anxiety attacks, slurred speech, depression, and migraines. They disrupt the gut barrier function. And diet soft drinks are just as bad, if not worse, than regular soft drinks. They increase cravings, weight gain, and the risk of type two diabetes. And they're highly addictive. No wonder people are confused. <laughs> There's so much information out there. What to believe, <sighs> quite frankly, I know how confusing it is and what I see on the internet, it's just driving me crazy, driving me nuts. So let's talk about some things. I'm going to talk about three things in particular. The first one we're going to talk about is observational studies. Much of nutrition research is based upon observational studies, meaning that we look at groups of people, sometimes thousands and thousands of people, and they self-report what they eat, and then we draw conclusions from that. But here's the thing, there might be a link an association, but correlation is not causation. May, maybe a study comes out that, oh my gosh, diet sodas make people gain weight. Maybe heavier people do drink diet soda more often, but is there excess weight due to the fact that they're drinking diet soda? Or maybe they're drinking diet soda because they're trying to lose weight. We don't know, but often so much of the nutrition research is based upon these observational studies that cannot prove cause and effect. Now, observational studies are very important for nutrition research and they can point us in the right direction, just like animal studies can point us in the right direction. But rats are not people. What may happen in an animal study may not happen in human studies. So often what I might see in, um, in reading the research conclusion might be, yes, this gives us some information, but we need clinical trials in humans to prove the cause and effect. This next point is really important, and that is something called the ADI, the Acceptable Daily Intake. The ADI is a value for chemicals that are in our food, and it shows how much we can safely consume on a daily basis for the rest of our lives. For example, the ADI set for aspartame, the sweetener in Diet Coke, you could consume 75 packets of aspartame every single day for the rest of your life with no adverse effects. Furthermore, there is a hundredfold safety factor. There are no magic bullets to our health. We're all individuals, we're all unique. We have to find what works for us. Um, and if an artificial sweetener helps you to maintain a healthy weight or for whatever um, reason that you're consuming them, then know that they're safe. If however you choose not to, that's fine, then don't. Now, truth be told, I wish I didn't drink Diet Coke, not because I'm worried about it, simply because it's, I really try to keep it very, very simple and eat as few um, manufactured foods as possible. And diet soda is probably the most 
processed thing that is in my diet. I'm not talking about going out and drinking a 12 pack a day. No, that is not my message. Check out what I have to say about cheat meals in this video up here, or this video about how this whole Diet Coke um, video kind of came about, talking about my habits. Thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.